When storms of life happen, what do we do? This past week, we've experienced a, a pretty good ice storm here in the valley where we live in Oregon. And, and most of the state uh, suffered some kind of ice storm damage or power outage, debris for sure, all over the place. And in fact, some are still experiencing it. It could be a very difficult and, and, and trying thing, especially when it's stinking cold out here. Um, and I know some people in our church couldn't even get out of their driveway to, to make it out and get goods. So what do you do when um, these things happen? By the way, I want to tell you that we do have a team organized that can help you with that debris cleanup. Um, or if a neighbor needs help, let us know. Just call the church office. Um, but the bigger question for us is what do we do when storms of life happen? A divorce, a, a loved one passes on, um, a burned down house. We had somebody in our fellowship had a burnt house. Well, what do you do with that? And, and even the more, where's God in these situations? Maybe that's a, another big question. Years ago, we brought a team down to hurricane relief for Katrina in Mississippi was our little place that they decided to put us. And um, we went months after the hurricane and even months and months later, there was devastation everywhere. You would drive down a street and both sides of the street, there was no buildings anymore. Um, no trees, no, no landscaping, for instance, it was just gone. Uh, I still remember the image in my mind about Walmart down by the coast there and, and just no windows of the shell of a building and uh, just absolutely the whole corner of the building torn off. But we went down and we helped with several projects, helped people get back into their homes, put a roof on a house, um, did a lot of those kinds of tasks. Um, drywall, so much drywall. But the thing that sticks with me is when we entered these people's homes and spent time with them, a lot of times around meals, is the encouragement that we brought, just being ourselves, being human. And, and it, it, it really stuck out to me, that whole thing. But when storms of life happen, we need people. We need to be able to count on humanity to help us. And we need a Savior to Zephaniah 3, not a very familiar book to us, says this, The Father is with you and will keep you anchored until the storm passes. I thought that was a really good scripture. Folks, uh, trouble is going to find us in this life. Jesus reminds us of that in the book of John. And, and the beauty of this is that he gives us his spirit to be with us at all times. During the devastation of physical things and the devastation hurtful storms of the emotional things. Here are these words from Jesus in, in the book of John again. He said, I have said these things to you, and he's talking to his disciples, that in me you have peace. In this world, though, you will have tribulation, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Listen to another translation at the end of this. It says this, you will experience trouble and sorrow. That's a fact. But you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. And, and, and I really like that. When you go through trials, you can't always think of heavenly things or godly things right at that moment. Most of us don't. That's kind of super mature. <laughs> and maybe a, a lot of you are there. But James says that as we endure these things, it develops in us patience to maturity that's kind of neat so there's a goal there's there's something that as we walk through these things there's a good path ahead so wherever you find yourself on this journey know that there will always be times of peace and rest and there will also be times of storms and trials we know that but all the while long no that Jesus is there and can give you all that you need. Reach out to him 
today. Thanks, church. Thanks for listening. I hope your Wednesday goes terrific and the rest of your week. We'll talk to you again soon.